Ezekiel chapter number 44, we'll begin reading in verse number 4. The Bible says this, Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, uh, and all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary to pollute it even my house when you offer my bread the fat and the blood and they have broken my covenant because of all of your abominations and ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves let's pray father thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you for your good grace. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for the precious promises of the word of God. There are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Uh, thank you that in him we are set in heavenly places. Uh, thank you that we have been robed in his righteousness, justified by faith. Uh, and Lord, what a privilege to be able to assemble ourselves with the saints of God, uh, sing songs of praise unto thee, and worship thee in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts even this very hour. Now, Father, I realize many of your people have worked hard this week. They've labored on their jobs. They've labored around their homes. Uh, Lord, I know that uh, sometimes on a Wednesday night we can be tired in body. But Lord, I pray for the next few minutes that you'd refresh us. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd help our minds to be alert uh, and help us to be alert to what thus saith the Lord. Help us not to be hearers only of the word of God, but to become doers of it. Help us to abide in the things of God and apply them to our hearts and to our lives. Thank you for these in attendance tonight. Be with those that are sick and afflicted. Be with every prayer request. Be with our dear friends here from Emmanuel and Jacksonville. I pray you'd give them a good trip. You'd help them as they go to the ark tomorrow to be blessed. And Lord, to be a light to those that will be there that may not know Christ. Help us, Lord, to always be mindful of your presence. Bless now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. Unlike the book of Jeremiah, Ezekiel's different. Jeremiah was prophesying what God gave him, uh, and he was preaching to the nation of Israel to repent so they would not go into captivity. Unfortunately, they stoned the prophets, they ignored them, they ignored Jeremiah, and uh, you know that uh, they were taken captive in Babylon, uh, and they were held in captivity for some 70 years. Uh, Ezekiel is a prophet, he is prophesying to Israel, and he is one of those in captivity. He is prophesying concerning what will happen with the nation of Israel once they return to their homeland. And uh, in this uh, chapter, we find several things, even in the context of the verses we read. Uh, you will find that there's the revelation of the sanctuary and its holiness. Uh, can I say if there's any indictment of this age we live in, uh, the church of God is no longer considered a place that is holy. Uh, can I say that this is where uh, God puts his stamp of approval on? This is where God takes up his abode. This is where God speaks uh, uh, through his word to his people. Uh, uh, God said, be ye holy for I am holy. Uh, can I say uh, as ambassadors of Christ, we ought to always uh, put our best foot forward. We ought to always strive to live a right 
righteous, holy life. Uh, we're living in a dark, dispersed world uh, that is wicked, that is chaotic, uh, that is on its way to hell, uh, and you and I may be the only person standing between them and hell, uh, and we may be all, the only representative of Christ that they'll ever see, uh, and they ought to see Christ in us. Uh, we find also in this chapter there's a reminder uh, of their sins past ruin. Can I say, uh, 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 listen, uh, 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 we could all go back to what we were before we got saved, uh, but Israel had a testimony that they were God's chosen people uh, and they rebelled against him. They served false gods. Uh, they became an, an idolatrous nation. They became a wicked nation. Uh, they even offered up their children as sacrifice to Molech, uh, uh, the god uh, uh, of Baal. Uh, and can I say, my dear friend, uh, uh, that can be said of America. We once were a Christian nation. We were known throughout the world. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, statesmen from everywhere in the world would come and see our uh, uh, wonderful industry, see our matchless constitution. Uh, but they'd go back to their nations and say what made America great was America was good. Uh, and America was good because of the righteousness that flamed from her pulpits uh, and folks had a conscience of God. Uh, uh, that can no longer be said of America long before we kicked God out of the schools uh, we kicked him out of our homes uh, and many places that are so called churches are kicking him out of church uh, uh, listen uh, uh, the sins of the past will catch up with this nation uh, we offer up our children through abortion uh, we offer up our children uh, uh, through uh, uh, all kinds of uh, secular education uh, and no longer point them towards Christ uh, some of you get nervous. I ain't even preaching yet. I read this, and uh, it's so true. It says, sin fascinates, then it assassinates. There is pleasure in sin for a season, but friend, uh, that pleasure runs out far too, too quickly, and then there's a price to be paid. Uh, and then this, we also find in these verses that uh, there is the restoration of blessings for the repentant. And aren't you glad that our God is a faithful God? Aren't you glad He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness? Uh, aren't you glad that God is a God of restoration? Uh, he spoke through Ezekiel and said, None saith restore. Uh, can I say we live in a day and age where our independent Baptist churches, they don't want to restore folks. Uh, uh, they want to kick them. They want to spit on them. Uh, they want to slit their throat while they're down. Uh, uh, but can I say the Bible says, uh, Ye which are spiritual, restore. Restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, lest thyself also uh, be tempted. Uh, but I'm not preaching on any of that. I want to look at the text that we read tonight, uh, and I want to get some uh, uh, clarity on this text before we get to the thought. I want you to notice, first of all, the attendance. Look again in verse number 4. Then he brought me the way of the north gate before the house, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell on my face. Can I say it's always wonderful when God shows up? Amen. Now we have assurance from His Word where two or three gathered in His name, He'll be in the midst. Right. But it sure is a blessing when He steps out from behind the shadows and lets you know He's in the midst. Right. We find in this attendance, uh, 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 notice the gate. It was the north gate. And the Lord's thrones in the sides of the north. The Lord came through the north gate. Notice the glory of the Lord. It said the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Uh, and what a blessing when His glory uh, manifests, manifests itself in our presence. Uh, and then notice the glorifying. He said, and I fell upon my face. Can I say that a lot of things going on in the name of the Lord uh, is not of the Lord? When you've got to have smoke and darkened lights and flashing strobe lights and you've got to have window washers... And you've got to have dancing, and you've got to have all... God's not any of the junk. Can I say, everywhere in the Scriptures, when the glory of the Lord shows up, people fall on their face in reverence and worship. What we call worship in worship. What we call worship is glorification of man. True worship honors God. Uh, man becomes a zero, and God becomes everything. Uh, we see the attendance in verse number 4. Notice the attention to be paid in verse number 5. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, here it is, mark well. He's saying, pin it down, 
He's saying underscore it, underscore it again, and for just uh, safety purposes, underscore it a third time, then highlight it. Mark it well. He said, Mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and all the laws thereof, uh, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. Notice where to pay attention to some things. He said, Mark well some things. He said, Mark well the ordinances. That's what he said. I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. And under the law, they had a whole lot many more ordinances than we do. He's talking about the law. We think of the law, most people think the Ten Commandments. There was well over 600 laws. Uh, can I say there were laws that just showed man could not mm, redeem himself. He couldn't keep the law. We're breaking the law sitting here tonight. Every one of us wearing blended fabrics. You know that was against the law? Hmm? That's just one of them. Uh, I can go on and on and on. If there was a law for ugly, we'd be in trouble. Uh, but can I say, in our day and age, the church age, we have two ordinances for the local church. Baptism and partaking of the Lord's Supper. He said, mark well those things concerning the ordinance. They're, they're special. They're important. There is instruction behind them. It's not to be deviated from. He said, mark well the ordinances. Then he says, mark well the oracles. Look what he says. And all the laws thereof. Can I say the Lord has given us his word on it? Amen. Too many people want to base uh, their spirituality on how they feel. Your feelings will fail you. Can I say the Lord's on the throne whether we feel good or whether we don't? Amen. Uh, it's not based on our feelings. Feelings change. You know what doesn't change? God's Word is forever settled in heaven. We're to base our spirituality on the facts of the Word of God and whether or not we are complying with it. But can I say we're to mark well the Word of God? It's, can, do you do know that you're going to be judged by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? You're going to give an account of the scriptures you're going to give an account of all of it and how you stood with God that's a sobering thought yeah. Amen. I guess in you know, the 37 years that I've been preaching I've preached some 15,000 or more messages and Brother Brian I'm going to give an account of every one of those messages and I don't even remember all of them but I'm going to still give an account of it do you realize we're going to give account of every message we've ever heard? Can I say this? And I ain't even preaching. Some of you start to sweat. Do you realize that if you lay out a church and you're not providentially hindered or sick, you're going to give an account of the message whether you was there or not? Because right. God gave it. The man of God delivered it. Where were you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Hmm. Sobering thing. You know all them chapters with the begats in it, you skip over, you're going to give an account of that. Amen. God pinned it down for a reason. Let me help you some say, Preacher, I just don't understand a lot of that. Nobody understands it all. Uh, only half of it's been told. He didn't tell us to understand it. He told us to believe it and obey it. There are some things our little finite minds can't comprehend. But I've learned this in being saved some nearly, well, over 50 years now. Uh, I've learned this. Uh, what I may have not understood 20 years ago, the more I read it, the more I read it, the more I grow, the more the Lord does work on me. Uh, and I get to the point where I start to understand things I used to not understand. It's kind of like that illustration that boy wanted to play football. He, and his, they owned a farm. His dad was a, a farmer, and his dad told him, uh, there's a big rock right off the porch. He said, son, if you can move that rock by the end of the, uh, of the harvest time, I'll let you play football. And every day that dad would see that boy out there trying to move that rock, trying to move that rock, trying to move that rock. Kind of be like a brother Ed trying to move Volkswagen. I mean, just one of them things. Uh, and uh, finally that boy comes in after several months, just dejected, said, dad, I'm not going to get to play football. He said, why, son? He said, I can't move that rock. He said, boy, 
Get down and give me 50 push-ups. A boy jumped down and did 50 push-ups. He said, give me 50 sit-ups. Did 50 sit-ups. And, and finally, Dad said, you, you can play football some. What you didn't realize, why you was, thought you was working on the rock, the rock was working on you. Right. And can I say, the more we get in the book, the more it works on us. Right. And the more we're around our rock, our heavenly rock, the more he works on us. Amen. Uh, we see we're to pay attention to the oracles, the law, of the word of God. But then he also makes it very clear that we're to pay attention to order. Can I say the Bible says let everything be done decent and in order? If you go somewhere and it calls itself a church and things are in chaos, it isn't of the Lord. And if anything goes on contrary to the word of God, it's not of the Lord. Hmm? But uh, notice what he said there in, in, in verse number 5. He said, Mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. He said there's to be some order. There's to be some order when you enter and some order when you exit. Hmm? I wonder if we really took note of the Lord before we entered. I wonder if we did business with the Lord before we come to do business with the Lord. Amen. And then we, when, when we leave, I wonder if we've done business with the Lord and we leave, we do business with the Lord. You see, there's to be an order of saying, we just don't show up and have church. Somebody needs to pray. Somebody needs to get a hold of the Lord. Somebody needs to study. Somebody needs to prepare. Uh, uh, listen, we need to come ready for what God has for us uh, and then receive what He has for us uh, and then take it out and use it for His glory. Huh? It's like this. We're to come in empty, get filled, go out, empty ourselves in this world, tell them folks about Christ, uh, Come back empty, get full, go out and empty ourselves. Uh, 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 that's how it works. Listen, um, that's about two-thirds. When I come in, Brother Tony had two cups up here. I thought he wanted me to preach a long time tonight. And there's only so much you can put in that. If we don't empty it out, there's only so much you can put, put in that. Some of us are spiritually fat. We haven't emptied ourselves. And we come in, we can't receive anything because there's no room. We need to empty ourselves. So we see that uh, there's attendance, there's attention. But then there's the abominable. Look at verse 6. Thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice of you of all of your abominations. He's talking to his people. He goes on to say, In that ye brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart, uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when you offer my bread, the fat, and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of your, all of your abominations. Listen. Just because it's accepted in the world don't mean God accepts it. And don't mean that it's acceptable in the house of God. Notice that word abomination means an object of abhorrence. Listen, God, when it's an abominable thing, He hates it. It disgusts God. And it amazes me how many people that claim to be saved are okay with things that God hates and things that disgust the Lord. And can I say they were abominable in granting access to strangers? Now, I'm not talking about visitors. I'm talking about people that were strangers in the fact that they were idol worshipers and they didn't want to have anything to do with God. And Israel allowed them to come in and take up shop in the sanctuary. Hmm. Can I say, when you let strangers come in, they'll offer up strange doctrine. Brother Moore, what scares me is a lot of people that used to go to independent Baptist churches today, they don't know the difference between strange doctrine and real doctrine. Mm -hmm. This place up on the corner. Uh, it's one of them window washing, non-denominational whatevers. But that place was built on people who used to attend Southern Baptist churches. Hmm. Well... Can I say the Southern Baptist churches started moving the needle? But they didn't move it far enough, so they went there. Uh, can I say the Lord's the same yesterday, today, and forever? He changes not, neither should we. 
We need to tow the rope, stay the, stay the course. And they offer up strange doctrines, strange devotion. They worship the idols. Amen. Hmm? Can I say we got folks in our Baptist churches that worship idols? Huh? Hmm. I can prove it. Lay down your phone for a week without picking it up. Well, I got a lot of amens right there. Some of you couldn't lay it down for two hours. You know why? Because you worship that thing. Say, Brother Doug, that's information. So is your Bible. Well, I knew that'd be popular. Uh, uh, that was real exciting, wasn't it? It's true. And you know what? One of these days you're going to stand before the Lord and all them times I got on Facebook and you got mad at me, you're going to wish you would have listened. All the times I got on social media, all the times I got on that phone. That phone's been the demise of America. America was in a lot better shape before we had that thing in our pockets. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Still not preaching yet. Uh, they bring in strange distractions. Big screens with a preacher on it because they don't have one behind a pulpit. Hmm? Screaming guitars. Hmm? My daughter showed me something or sent me something today. Y'all know my friend has been here preaching revival for his brother Cody Zorn. He's a little bashful, backwards. Well, one of these uh, big quotation marks, Christian rock concerts, one of these Christian rock stars, had a huge screen, I mean huge, and blows up with Cody on there preaching. Calling anybody that follows that music, perverts and drunks and drug addicts and all kinds of stuff. Well, then they crank up a big screaming guitar. I mean, it sounded like something from the early 70s. Smoke, whites, and then this guy gets real vulgar in the microphone. Spoke supposedly Christian, making fun of Brother Cody. Preaching. Huh? So I text him. I say, hey, you ought to sue him. That's defamation. He said, well, my lawyer's looking into it, and he's used it in at least three states. I said, I'm going to start calling you Cody Cash. <laughs> That's about what his response was. Can I say, there's all kinds of things that will distract you from the truth. Uh, listen, there are churches that have turned into circuses. I'm all for getting them in so you can preach to them. But when you're replacing preaching with a circus, it's not of God. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Uh, listen, not only did they, uh, were they abominable in granting access to strangers, it was abominable in spoiling the sanctuary. He said it polluting it. And they were abominable in their sacrifices. He mentions they offered up to these strangers the bread, the fat and the blood. The bread is a picture of the type of the Word of God. And they do away with the Word of God. They give to strangers and then they want to change it. They want to change it, make it more gender friendly. huh? The fat is a representation of the blessings of God. And friends, when we become sacrilege, the blessings are gone. Uh, and of course, the blood is a picture of our atonement. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how many preachers don't even preach on the blood anymore. huh? And then notice in verse number 8, and this is where I want to preach tonight. Notice the act of disobedience. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Where the Lord says you haven't kept the charge. He's talking about to observe and obey His commands. But Jim, when you was in the military, if you got a command and didn't keep it, it wasn't good for you, was it? No. Mm-mm. Oh, Brother Charlie come in. Huh? 
I don't care how far under under uh, the ocean you was in that uh, in that uh, floating whatever you was in. That you're not allowed to talk about that nuclear sub that you's in. Uh, I imagine uh, if you disobeyed an order, it wouldn't have been good, even though they couldn't kick you out. Hmm? Uh, Well, how come we think we can disobey God's commands and get away with it? We are to observe them and to obey them. And he says there in verse number 8, You've not kept the charge of mine holy things. Here it is. But ye set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. You set keepers of my charge for yourselves. I got to thinking about that. Here's what I want to preach on. I want to preach on who's keeping your charge. Amen. He said, you've set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. You're not keeping it, but you've set somebody up to do it. Who's keeping your charge? I'm reminded in Song of Solomon chapter number 1 that little Shunammite maid, uh, she said this in verse number 6, last part of that verse, she said, they made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Can I say in this day and age, uh, I'm talking about God's people. We're so busy with life. We're busy with our jobs. We're busy with uh, keeping the house in order. We're busy with everything going on uh, that we haven't taken care of the things of God. Amen. We're keeping our others' vineyards, but our own vineyards we haven't kept. Who's keeping your charge. Can I say, who's keeping the charge of your vessel? Hmm? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. In 2 Timothy 2, 20, the Bible says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse two, uh, 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, uh, and prepared unto every good work. Uh, in Revelation chapter 1, and verse number 6, uh, the Bible says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Uh, uh, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, can I say the Lord is not going to make us kings and priests? Uh, he has made us kings and priests in Christ Jesus. Uh, he's made us a king to rule and reign over our fle flesh. Uh, and he's made us a priest where we can go directly uh, to God through our mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we can walk into the throne room through the avenue of prayer and talk directly to God. Uh, 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 with that in mind... Uh, you have been granted the authority from the Lord and from the Word of God to keep your vessel. You can keep your vessel. It can be sanctified and meet for the Master's use. You can observe and obey the very Word of God. You can overcome. You can make a difference. You can live a Christian life. Are you doing that or have you set somebody else up to keep charge of your vessel? Well, preacher, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. He doesn't have that authority over you. If he got the best of you, it's because you allowed him to. Hmm? Well, preacher, I got... No, it's not going to hold weight when you're at the judgment seat. Can I say that we are to keep our vessels pure and clean before the Lord? Who's in charge of your vessel? How about the actions of your vessel? Hmm. Huh? You know, you go everywhere you want to go and do everything you want to do. How about when it comes to the things of God? How about who's keeping the charge of your vessel's attitude? Amen. Heard somebody say years ago, your attitude will never get higher than your attitude. Well, how's your attitude? Can I say, I can always tell when somebody's been fighting with their spouse when they walk in them doors back there. They usually look like Brother Thad. No, I'm just teasing Brother Thad. I really am. Uh, uh. No. Listen, any day we can have a bad day. But some of you continually have bad days. Because you got bad attitudes, huh? Can I say, 
being negative all the time is a bad attitude. That rubs off on people. Hmm? Uh, you're in charge of your vessel. You're in charge of your actions. You're in charge of your a attitude. But sometimes we give that to somebody else. You've heard Brother Greg Phillips say, uh, he who angers you controls you. And so if you allow somebody to get under your skin, they're going to stay there. It amazes me how many people in, in life get so full of self. I'm thinking of somebody to pick on. Let's go pick on Big B over here. Hmm? Uh, how you doing, man? Doing all right, sir. You don't sound all right. You sound like Froggy from Little Rascals. Yes. You are a rascal. Huh? <laughs> But so, so many people get so full of self right. that they come in the house of God and if it's not wrapped around them, then all of a sudden somebody's got a problem. Uh, your friend, Brother Clint, and he is your friend. He's had a bad day. Well, Miss Rhonda didn't let him drive the Mustang today. So, Lord have mercy, he had to drive that Maserati he's got today. I saw you pull out of that on Sunday. I said, Dad, sorry, no good. You know, you should have been in the altar repenting over that thing. Huh? That's true. You haven't even let me drive it. I let you drive my vet. I got the keys right Well, it's too late. <laughs> if I got to ask for him, it's too late. It's kind of like, you know, if you forget your anniversary. Uh, he's had a bad day. So he doesn't shake your hand. Mm. So all of a sudden, oh, Clint's mad at me. And you stew on that all week. Clint's mad at me, didn't shake my hand. Uh, you have no idea what what he's really loaded down with. Right. Maybe be under under a, a tremendous load, a burden. Right. It wasn't that he didn't deliberately didn't shake your hand. He didn't even know you was here because he couldn't even see because of the load he's under. Right. But you're sitting there all week. Well, by Friday, well, you know what? I'm mad at him. Sorry, no good. I don't like him anyway. And then it goes on from week after week after week after week after week after week, and all of a sudden, you hate him. And all the while, he has no idea that you've got, he wasn't mad at you, but you allowed the devil to build that up in your mind and control your vessel and control your attitude. Right. And do you think we can really have worship when we come in and you're mad at him? Right. Hmm? That entering and exiting has got a problem there. Hmm? Huh? And listen, that may sound like some little simple, no way that can happen. That happens all the time. Hmm? Uh, because the battles are mind. And the devil put thoughts in your mind. And if you're not in control of your vessel, and you're not keeping your vessel, that mind will run wild. The next thing you know, you're just drifting farther and farther away from the Lord. Can I say... Mm, who's in charge of your vessel? Who's in charge of your vessel's accountability? I mean, how many times does the preacher have to preach on being faithful? Hmm? Let me go pick on Brother Ed. I haven't picked on him since I called him Big Bird earlier. Or church, I called him Big Bird. Let me ask you a question. How long have you miss, miss Vanessa been married? Big five old, 50 years. 50 years. Man, she's got a special crown in heaven waiting on her. Amazing. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Let's say you pull that big Ford truck in the driveway and you walk in and say, Miss Vanessa, i gotta, I got to let you know, I've been pretty faithful this week. <laughs> you going to be married 51 years? <laughs> Probably not. That cane you got, she's going to use it. <laughs> it hurts, see? Yeah, it does hurt. huh? Oh, she yeah. probably has used it before, hasn't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, <laughs> look at her. <laughs> Pretty, pretty faithful don't cut it. I mean, we would, we would never, ever settle for our spouse being pretty faithful. Huh? Some of you boys ain't even had girlfriends that are serious yet. But if you, she looks at another boy, boy, it tears you up, doesn't it? Let me look at Aiden. Boy, I can see right there, huh? <laughs> Guilty right there, bud. Huh? Man. Not yet. I know you're Indian, but you're not that red. Come on. Huh? Lord have mercy. Go back here and meet Brother Fox. He's real. He's full-blooded. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Boy, he turned red on that deal right there. No, we don't cut pretty faithful. Well, why would we ever expect the Lord 
to accept pretty faithful. Lord, I'm pretty faithful. I read my Bible some. I pray occasionally. And if nothing else is going on, I'll go to church. You think the Lord is satisfied with that? I'm just asking, who's keeping your vessel? Who's in charge of it? I, I believe uh, uh, you know, stewards, it's accounted of stewards to be faithful. We're stewards of the Word of God. We're stewards of the things of God. Hey, it's not our salvation. It's His salvation. Uh, he saved us from sin. David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, Listen, uh, if I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell tonight, uh, and so would you. Uh, but he didn't give us what we deserve. Uh, he showed us mercy, uh, and he extended his grace, uh, and he saved us from our sins. Uh, what a faithful Lord. Uh, even before we get, get the words out, he already knew in our hearts we were turning to him and repenting uh, and asking him to save us, and he saved us. Hallelujah. Huh? Cracks me up, this crowd says, well, if you don't say a certain thing, then you weren't saved. Lord, have mercy. Get over it, buddy. Right. Yeah, I huh? Listen, I've been saved 50 years. I don't even remember yesterday, let alone what I prayed when I called on the Lord. All I knew is I called on him, and he answered because I was different when I got up from the altar. Uh, I bless the Lord. But who's in charge of our vessels? Let me ask you this. Who's in charge of our vision? Everybody knows Proverbs 29, 18, and where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You know what's wrong with most people's Christianity? We have no goals to get better in our Christianity. We ought to be closer to God this year than we were last year. We have a, ought to have a desire to walk with the Lord more this year than we did last year. We ought to desire to reach more people for the Lord this year than we did last year. We ought to desire to give more to missions and give more to the Lord than we did last year. Uh, listen, if you never make a goal, you certainly aren't going to hit it. We ought to strive to do more. The Bible said grow in grace, nurture and admonition of the Lord. That grow, growing is a progressive word. It means it's continual. And we don't stop reach uh, uh, the pinpoint somewhere and stop. We've arrived. We, that happens when we get that glorified body. But until then, we ought to strive to serve the Lord. But people don't make spiritual goals for themselves. You know, I go back time, you know, every time and, and again, I'll go back and listen to some of my preaching thinking, Lord have mercy, they still keep coming and hearing me. But I constantly try to improve even in my preaching. You never get to a point where you're just satisfied. But where are our goals? Who have you given charge of your vision? What is our goal to grow spiritually? We ought to have the goal to be Christ-like. And not stop till we are. What is our goal to give? What is our goal to give in service? How much can I serve the Lord this year? What can I do for the Lord this year? There's plenty to do. Uh, I know most of us, we want to do something, you know, that we want to do. You know, I certainly would be one if I could sing like some of the people sang tonight. Uh, man, I, give me a microphone, let me sing. Uh, or if I could play an instrument like some people. Oh, I'll play an instrument. But God has given you abilities and talents. Why don't you use what he's given you? Amen. Well, if I could just pastor. Trust me, you don't want that, you don't want that hat. Huh? That's a calling. Yeah, if God doesn't call a man, he's not going to last long. Right, right. Hmm? Uh, but listen, we got a bus back there, we got a van back there. Why don't you go get that thing, go pick up some people, and bring them to church? Hmm? That's something you can do. You can drive, can't you? You got here, didn't you? Huh? Why don't you uh, use some other gifts and talents you got to serve the Lord? What's your goal? What's your goal not only to give in service, what's your goal to give sacrificially? How many of you have truly prayed and say, Lord, what do you want me to give? See, most of the time we give conveniently. And I'm not only talking about our money. God help us. Who is in charge of your vision? What is our goal to go after souls? 
Boy, I appreciate all the folks that come out and go out on Monday night. I appreciate all the young people that come and go out on Monday night. I always am so blessed going out with them young people and talking with them who are out knocking on doors, passing out tracks. And, and it amazes me. I've watched them grow. And it amazes me just listening to them when they talk to people, invite them to church and talk to them about the Lord. It's just it's a blessing. And I appreciate all those. But maybe you can't go out Monday night. I've told you all before. We'll, we'll, tell me when you can go. We'll get people to go with you. How about loading your pockets up and just taking them tracks out and giving them out? Go to the mall. There's nobody there, but go. Uh, that is a sad thing. I remember when people from all over the state of Kentucky had come to Florence Mall. That was a highlight of Kentucky. Uh, now even the foreigners don't go there. I mean, it's terrible. Uh, uh, it is. It's horrible. But listen, you can go anywhere. You can find people. Pass out some tracks. Invite folks to church. Tell folks about the Lord. What is our goal about going after souls? You ever pray about, Lord, show me another way I can reach somebody. Lord, put somebody on my heart that I can impact. Take them flash drives and those packets out. And You know, I appreciate there are some that are constantly praying and coming up with new ideals to reach people. Amen. Keep it up. But what's our vision? Who, who have you given charge of vision? Who have you given charge for your vanity, your ego? Hmm? Everybody's got an ego. Some people have more ego than others. Well, we all got an ego. The Bible said in Psalm 119, verse 37, Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou, in me, quicken thou me in thy way. Proverbs 11, 2, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 13, 10, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Who do you put in charge of your ego? You see, when you get upset because somebody else does something around the house of God and you didn't get to do it, that's your ego speaking. You ought to be thankful somebody was willing to do something around the house of God. And we got so many people that work and labor around the house of God, you ought to be thankful. Huh? Say, preacher, why didn't I get to do that? Because you didn't show up or you didn't ask to do it. Hmm? Uh, so many times we get our egos in check. Uh, there have been several things that have been said to me over the years that I count as a blessing. One of them is, Brother Doug, you're not selfish with, you, with your pulpit. Well, it's not my pulpit. It's the Lord's. But I am not selfish with it. I have brought in a lot of preachers to preach. Number one, I need preaching. But number two, if I've heard them, they've been a blessing to me. I know they'll be a blessing to you. Uh, and we'll never get too much preaching. But it's also comforting to know that there are others out there that believe the same Bible, the same way we believe it, and what a blessing that we've had so many great preachers. Just look at all the preachers you've got to know. Huh? Amen. I'll tell you, where's the Emmanuel crowd? The other Emmanuel crowd. The southern Emmanuel crowd. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Uh, if y'all were at conference last year, I was sitting in the back uh, next to my friend Brother Paul Hill and it was right before Brother Neil called me up on the platform to pray. I had no idea he was going to call me up on the platform I'm still mad at him because he called me up there and he said Brother Foster's been faithful for decades I went back and I asked Brother Hill I said, has he called me old? he said well preacher you have been faithful for decades I'm thinking <laughs> I don't know if I like that or not you know but before all that I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Lord, how did I get here? I did. I was thinking, I said, Lord, how did I get here? I mean, me, nobody. How did I get here? How did Brother Neil become my friend? Well, I do know that I ordered his book, uh, Satan's Toolbox. I enjoyed it. I started handing out to young preachers. Started ordering them, handing them out to young preachers. One day I said, you know, I'm going to send him an email. Tell him I appreciated his book. And I did so, and he was so gracious to him get back in contact with him, invite me to the first conference. And when I got down there, Brother Fox was one of the first people who greeted me. 
I've never forgotten that. But I'm sitting there thinking, how did I get here? Who am I? And isn't it amazing how God can orchestrate and work and bring things together? And all? Do you realize without the goodness of God, you'd never get to hear some of the preaching that you've heard? Some of the great men of God that have come through. we got great men of God coming through here in November. Some of the great preachers. that, And what a blessing. I have never, ever taken that as, an, you know, as a non-compliment that we'll share our pulpit. We'll let people come preach. This church used to have a pastor that never let anybody else come and preach. I often thought, well, suppose if they heard real preaching, they probably wouldn't keep coming. But anyway, that's another whole thing. Nah. But you better keep your ego in check. You all know. When you come back there at the door, and if you enjoy a message every now and then, you'll tell me, Preacher, thank you for the message. You know what I'm going to say. Give God the glory. I'm not going to take any credit for it. God's the one that gave me the intellect. God's the one that called me to preach. God's the one that showed me the thought. God's the one that developed it. God's the one that gave me the talent to deliver it. It's all of the Lord. And I know, where's Miss K? She's back. i got to go pick on her. Miss K, she'll come up and she'll say, yeah, but God used you to deliver it. Huh? <laughs> Haven't you said that? Huh? You know why I don't let you give me credit? Because I know me. And if I start taking credit for what the Lord's done, I know my ego. My head gets so big, and I heard somebody once say that a head that leaks won't swell. Huh? You start getting a big-headed preacher, you're headed to the wrong in the wrong direction. I got to keep my ego in check. So do you? Amen. Hmm? Huh? Uh, who's in charge of your vanity? Who's in charge of your validity? You know what the world wants to see? People that are real. Amen. Can I say most times when I meet somebody for the first time, the last thing I want to do is tell them I'm a pastor. Because, you know, you get some real weird looks when people find out you're a preacher. Uh, I learned a long time ago, if I can make a friend out of them, then maybe I can win them. Hmm? But if they find out I'm a pastor, they're going to turn tail and run. They're, you know, I don't want to be around that guy. Uh, but people want to see you're real. I forget playing golf with a guy, and he told me one time, he said, you are the craziest and most fun Baptist person I've ever met. Uh I didn't take that as a bad thing. Because I've met a lot of Baptists I wouldn't want to play golf with. They cheat. Yeah. <laughs> they don't write the right score down. Uh, what can I say? Peter said in 2 Peter 1.10, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. But be real. Be who God made us. Be real. It's okay to be saved. It's okay to live a clean life. It's okay uh, uh, not to partake in worldly things. It's okay to have standards. It's okay to be Christ-like. Just be real. Nobody wants a phony baloney. I can't stand that stuff. Uh, got that Joe Olstein smile. Uh, walk around like they're better than somebody. Nobody likes that junk. Uh, let me say this lastly. I've preached way too long tonight. But I'm having so much fun. Who do you got keeping charge of your victory? I quoted the other night, the end of service, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. God's people are never to live a defeated life. If you're defeated, it's because you allowed it to happen. You've given somebody else charge of your victory. Hmm? Romans 8, 37, Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through Him that loved us. I'm not saying you can't have a bad day. I can't, I'm not saying that things won't always go your way. I'm not saying you can't have problems. But you can still have victory. Amen. Uh, in 2019, when Miss Annette told me I had cancer, that wasn't a day I signed up for. But you know what? He was the same Lord then as He is now. Amen. 
And he's been faithful. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Again, our attitude a lot of times determines our victory. Some of us like being Eeyore. Thanks for noticing. Hey, I sure would like some attention. I've told you Eeyore acts that way because he's got his tail nailed to him. And it's a very sensitive spot. You would be, thanks for noticing too. But it's okay, even on your bad days, to praise the Lord. He said he's got a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness in Isaiah 61.3. And I've learned that regardless of your circumstances, regardless what you're facing, if you can praise the Lord, it won't be long that your praise starts to uplift your spirit and you'll have victory again. I said, all oh, I'd say this tonight. Israel was forced into captivity because they disobeyed God and they gave His charge of His holy things to strangers. Many of God's people are in bondage tonight. And they're in bondage because they haven't kept the charge of God's word and God's will for their life. Every time I have to counsel folks, every time that we have to deal with folks that's having problems to where it's affecting their spirituality the vast majority of the time it's because they're not in the will of God and they're not being obedient to the word of God if we just learn to regardless of our circumstance you've heard me say this a million times before it comes to me it's got to go through his hand and nothing ever comes into your life that God didn't already know it so he's already got the answers and he's already probably equipped you to handle it. So rather than sit down and mope, why don't you just trust him? When Job went and sat down in the ash pile, he wasn't moping. He went back to the place where he had worshipped before, many times over. Only this time he has no animal to offer. The only thing he has left is himself. And he goes back to worship. Naked came, he came into the world. Naked he was going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he went back to the place where he knew God had met with him before. And can I say, no matter what comes, if you can get back to God, Amen. you'll find yourself too with an inner strength you didn't know you had. Quit living in bondage. Quit giving the precious things of God in your life. For somebody else to control. Take control of your life. Be obedient to God. Put Him first. And watch and see if business don't pick up in your life. Let's all stand, brother. Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they come, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, there's been many times that I haven't been in charge of my vessel. There's been many times that, Lord, I haven't lived victorious. Many, many times I haven't been what I should be. God, I'm glad you're faithful. And God, I pray for your people. Maybe there's somebody here tonight. Lord, they're just needing some comfort, needing some help, needing some edification. God, help them tonight. God, maybe somebody's struggling. I pray you'd strengthen them. God, maybe there's somebody in our midst tonight unsaved, lost without Christ. And I know I didn't preach a salvation message, but the Holy Spirit can do all things. And God, I pray you'd convict them of sin and through cords of love draw them to an altar of repentance. God, whatever the need is, maybe somebody needs got a burden for somebody needs to come and pray. Maybe there's somebody here tonight that is mad at somebody. Lord, I pray they'd go to them, get that thing made right. God, I just pray your perfect will be accomplished in the hearts of your people. Bless now this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.